Hey beautiful people and welcome to Life with Mrs B. If you're new around here, hey guys, my name is Paula. This is my YouTube channel. I like to share videos like this, along with grocery hauls, mum day in the lifes, and I have a lot of food content. I don't know how that happened. Maybe it's because I like to eat, I'm not sure, but I also share that. So if that sounds good to you, hit the subscribe button. If you're not new, thanks so much for coming back and checking out another video. Today we are talking about mental health, in particular my mental health. And I just want to start off this video by saying, in case you did not know, I am not a doctor. I'm not trained in mental health in any capacity. I'm just me, Paula, sharing my stuff on the internet and just talking about me and how I'm doing. So if you have any problems, guys, please speak to your GP. And I'll also put some links in the description box of like organizations you can contact if you're struggling with your mental health just now. I feel like mental health is still a pretty like taboo subject to talk about. People do not seem to talk about it as much as we do our physical health. And that really sucks, like it really does. This video is a little bit of a run on from last Monday's video where we spoke about fakeness and the kind of influencer world and how people only share their highlights, their best bits, be it a content creator like myself or just like your friends on Facebook and stuff. So I wanted to just be real with you guys, be honest with you guys. So that's why I'm talking about mental health, my mental health today. Now, if you know me or you followed me before, I have spoken about my mental health a little bit. I've not had the best mental health over the years. I had a pretty crap try childhood. <laughs> childhood. I did speak about it a little bit in my Why I Don't Talk To My Family video. I spoke about it there. I was a self-harmer when I was like 16. I had very, very, very disordered eating, very disordered eating. It was one thing I could control in a situation where I was not in control at all. I also became depressed. I suffered from really bad depression from when I was 17 up to like 20, 21 and I was on antidepressants and well I say like I suffer from it till then but I don't think depression ever really goes away and I, I'm not depressed, I'm not depressed but I don't think it ever really goes away. I think it kind of waxes and wanes but it kind of always stays with you in some form or another and whilst I'm not depressed just now you know it kind of always is there at least that's how I feel but I got off antidepressants probably when I was like 20, 21. Then I had my accident which I do have a video about that as well. I feel like this is just going to be lots of check out this video, check out this video but I did have an accident, I broke my leg, I fell walking down a muddy hill and snapped my leg right into like I mean there was two two pieces and it was like an open fracture and it was horrible and I had to have a big operation and I had a plate like this size put in my leg like no joke like this size with eight screws wire it was it was a horrible time it was really horrible and ever since then my mental health has been kind of not not the best and I would say it kind of started out as anxiety or not even anxiety but kind of just reliving the accident and I was in so much pain so so much pain I can't even explain it the painkillers I was on were so the, were, the painkillers that I was on were so strong but they were prescribed by an anaesthetist in the hospital and kept in a locked box it was like a patient pump thing and kept in a locked box by the side of my bed and when it ran out they had to go and get the anaesthetist not a doctor to come and prescribe me more like so that's how strong the stuff was and I also had to wear oxygen whilst I was on that stuff because it was pretty strong so I kind of relived it relived the whole accident the whole experience it was very traumatic for me very traumatic and ever since then I have been quite an anxious person I really worry that something that happened to me will happen to the kids and I hate that because I kind of have projected that onto them a little bit like you know don't do that this is how this happens don't do that this is how this happens and I, I really didn't like that so I have tried to rein that back in because I don't want to project those fears onto the kids and I don't want them to grow up being fearful if that makes sense because obviously accidents happen to us all the time anytime but ever since then I've just been quite an anxious 
person. And in the last year, I would say my mental health has kind of, no, it's not kind of, it has went down. I have been so, so anxious, just suffering really badly from anxiety. I also used to have really bad stress headaches, but I'm pretty thankful that they're gone now. And it's mostly just the anxiety. I can't even explain what I'm anxious about. I'm just anxious about everything. A year ago when this whole thing started, this pandemic, I used to make Thomas take his clothes off in the back garden. And I can kind of joke about it now, but then I was so upset and stressed and worried and anxious that he would bring coronavirus into our home because he was still working. He's like a key worker and he would come home and I would just make him stand in the garden and take off all these clothes and then go directly into the shower. Like that's how worried and anxious I was. I would clean all the door handles and the light switches and it was just horrible. And then over the past year, I've had a couple of panic attacks, which has been, which has been a first for me. I've never had a panic attack before and boy, are they horrible. They are just, they are horrible. I can't even describe them. And if you've never had one, you probably, think oh well you know it's just what it is it doesn't sound that bad but honestly you feel like you're gonna die I honestly some people say they feel like they're having a heart attack definitely wasn't a heart attack for me it was more like I just couldn't breathe like I really was so every time I've had one I just feel like I'm suffocating not so much a heart attack but just suffocating and it's it's horrible. I feel like I'm going to die because I feel like I'm suffocating to death. Like I can't breathe. And it's been horrible. Luckily this year, we're in March, the middle of March just now, and I've not had any so far. I have been very close to having a couple of panic attacks quite a few times this year already, but I've kind of been able to, I've been like at the brink of having one and I've pulled it back. And I'm really grateful for that because it's just a horrible, horrible experience. You don't, you don't want to go through it. If you can manage to pull yourself back from it, then do it. <laughs> Thomas, that's my husband. He has been trying recently to help me feel less anxious. And, you know, he kind of knows my triggers now and what makes me anxious and what sets my anxiety off. Sometimes there's just nothing that sets my anxiety off and it's just sky high absolute sky high and I am so grateful that he is trying hard to help me I really am because it must be horrible to be on the other side and to see me like this and there's nothing you can do as a husband as a wife as a whatever you know there's nothing you can you can really do to help especially when you're having a panic attack like there's there's just nothing that anyone can do to help you I thought about making this video a couple of weeks ago when I was quite low a couple of weeks ago, like I was really, maybe like three weeks ago, I was just like, I can't even explain it, I was just so anxious every day, just every day, but the past couple of weeks have been a lot better for me and I thought about sharing this video because I want people to know, like first up I want people to know this is who I am. Do you know what I mean? I am who I am. But I want other people to know that if you feel this way and you have other mental health problems or you have other mental health problems, it's okay. I think it's important to know that you're not alone in what you're going through. And whilst, you know, I'm not going through exactly the same thing, you're not alone. You're not alone. And in a world of fakeness and toxic positivity, toxic positivity is everywhere. I need to do a video on that one day. And I can just feel like everyone's just so happy all the time and their lives are so perfect and you see this in Instagrammer and this YouTuber and this friend on Facebook and they've got it all. It's just the highlights guys man. People do have problems with mental health. People's lives are not perfect. It's just not possible. So I just want to share that. I want to share that I'm not perfect and this is where I'm at right now with my mental health. As I said, I do feel a little bit better over these past couple of weeks, which is great. I'm also hoping restrictions are kind of easing a little bit now. So I'm hoping to get out a little bit and, you know, I don't know if you can see people, but you know, get back to a little bit of normality. I'm really looking forward to that. That's my video guys. I just wanted to share where I'm at just now, 
how I'm doing, how I'm feeling and I just wanted to be real with you guys. So I will see you in my next video guys. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and I will see you then. Bye!